Hello, everybody, and welcome to the season finale of Impact Podcast. I'm glad that you all tuned in today. Um, we have a very special guest today, and it's our pastor, and my father, uh, Bishop Eric Kennedy, the pastor of Rockstone Church. So y'all just, uh, y'all just uh, say welcome to the show to your pastor, if you are a member of Rockstone Church, and just help welcome him to the show today. I am your host, Christian Kennedy. I'm your host, Christian Kennedy. Um, here's some our, my co-host. I'll let them introduce themselves. My name is Darren Bird. If you're just now tuning in, I'm going to keep it professional today. <laughs> got the man of the hour here. I'm Imani. Yes, and uh, this is this is your regular uh, Impact Podcast crew. Um, shout out to our producer in the back, Lindsay Kennedy. We thank you for sticking with Woo! us all season long. Y'all give her a shout out in the comments. So um, we're just happy that that God has allowed us to make it through a whole season. And um, for people, for the for our everydayers, for our our day oneers, where y'all came in and y'all watched this whole season, we appreciate y'all. And for all those that you know, you commented, you shared with others, and you brought more people in through Impact Podcast. We just thank you. In the like from the beginning, I, I hope that we've impacted somebody through this season, because the key word of this season, our main topic that we wanted to cover was impact. So we hope that we've impacted the future by pointing to the cross and we've impacted someone through this show. So with that being said, it's time to get on with the episode. Are y'all ready? We ready. We're ready, we're ready, okay. Let's do it. So, uh, I would introduce him, but I would say, I would like for you to give an introduction yourself. You probably already know who he is. But just give a short introduction of who you are, you know. Well, it's good to be on the podcast. Uh, my name is Eric Kennedy. I am the pastor of the Rockstone Church. Um, proud dad of Christian and pastor of Imani and Darren. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just happy to be here. So we've been pastoring here uh, 20 plus years, uh, Rockstone and Stone Mountain. Um, and we're just having a great time. So we're just looking forward to what we're uh, going to accomplish tonight. Yes, yes, yes. And that was just a that was just a short introduction of himself, but he has all these accolades and all this stuff. So a lot of knowledge, um, a lot of knowledge will be spoke upon tonight. So with that being said, I'm gonna do kind of like an introduction question. A question. I might know a little bit of the answer, but I want for y'all to know more about the in depth of being of life as a pastor and everything like that. So with that being said, tell us a little bit about your journey from. I know that me recently I've accepted my call, but it's a different calling when you're called to pastor. So tell us a little bit about your journey with your calling when you came into pastoring. I'll be honest, my journey started uh, when I was when I was young. Uh, when I say young, very young, Bishop uh, Apostle Leroy Kennedy would always joke with me when I was a little boy. He he said that I told him I would be a, a pastor, a bishop, uh, and he said he never doubted it because I said it with conviction. I mean, I knew early on that my calling was going to be to serve the kingdom. Um, it just took me a long time, not a long time, but it took me 20 plus years from the moment that I felt the calling, which was a young boy, to where I actually did it. Um, so the journey has been one of faith, it's been one of obedience, uh, it's been one where God had to basically break me down to, uh, to a level of obedience where I would do what he said. So it's been a, a wonderful journey, it's been a long journey, it's been a difficult journey. Uh, I've been blessed, and I knew that God had something for me because I, I was able to serve under uh, three presiding bishops. I've uh, been able to serve under uh, men of integrity. I don't have that testimony of pastors who are playing church. I don't have that testimony of pastors who are cheating on their wives. I don't have that testimony of pastors who care more about the money and the glamour. I mean, I served under men that were all about God. They were great men, nice men, uh, and it's really shaped me. So I knew God had me in the right places at the right time. Uh, and this journey for where we are at Rockstone has, uh, has been a wonderful journey, but it's been a difficult journey. And so, um, you know, that, that God called. Uh, it took me a while to answer, but, but he's been there every step of the way. And um, again, the journey started when uh, the very first time I, I was ready to preach, the Lord spoke to me um, in the pulpit. And he said, if you go, I'll go with you. And so from that moment, um, you know, sometimes you have to go back and realize what the Lord is doing, what he's saying, and why. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you don't realize the difficulty of what the task is ahead. But that's why God gives you the confirmation first. I'm there. I'll be there. So it's just been a, a wonderful journey. I've learned a lot. I've gotten certain 
you know, things accomplished, certain accolades, but uh, I always remain unimpressed uh, with myself. I'm nothing but a, ch a child of God. Uh, and as long as I can remain a child of God and do it God's way, at the end of the day, I do all of this to hear two words, as, the, as this church has heard me say it before. I do all this to hear him say, well done. And after that, there's nothing else I really need to, to hear or to see. See, that, that's what I wanted for y'all to hear and everything like that. And by hearing that, like your journey, it's evident that you've walked and you this this church that, that you know, you've built along with the the saints has been an impactful walk. So with that being said, impact, this being the impact season, take us into what it came down to when you came down to the mission statement of impact in the future by pointing to the cross. Impact. If you're not going to impact society, if you're not going to make an impact, then what are you doing? Uh, I've often said that I don't want to be just a good speaker, great speaker. I'm not trying to out preach anybody, but I want it to be anointed. Somebody needs to leave church thinking, contemplating, pondering, uh, forcing change. And so that word God gave to me years ago, impact. Um, we need to have an impact. The, the, the Bible, the word of God, Christ himself had an impact. He changed the world. Three years of ministry changed the entirety of the world. Twelve men that, that God used to turn the world, the Bible says, upside down. So if you're going to be in ministry, it's not about money, it's not about fame, fortune, all of that nonsense. It's about impact, impacting somebody's life. And so every Sunday, every Wednesday, whenever I step into this church, rehearsals, you name it, I want to impact somebody. And it's, how do we impact them? Not by my intellect, not by one plus one is two, not by our financial knowledge, not about our degrees. But we impact them by the greatest message that has ever been preached that has ever been taught, that has ever been lived, and that's the message of the cross. So we want to make sure that the cross, at the end of the day, it was what? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart that rolled away. So if you want to impact somebody, don't impact them with your knowledge. Impact them with the cross. It is the message of the church, the cross. It cannot be refuted, cannot be denied, and, and no matter what, there's power at the cross. So that's where God gave it to me. If you want to make an impact, don't do it, you know, any other way. But the message of the cross, and it's wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up with the gospel message of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if, and if you don't mind, uh, a few things jumped out at me. And you said that you didn't just want to be a good speaker, but you wanted it to be anointed. Yes. And I noticed that even with doing music, like some of these places I might go, I said the same thing, like I want my music to be anointed because some of these guys, they can perform real good, but they're talking about trash. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even doing gospel music. Right. And another thing you mentioned was that you served under some men of integrity. And even from my experience, I hear so many crazy stories about pastors and money. And I really can't believe that they would do this stuff because like not you know, bragging, but I, I didn't experience that even being here. It's like sometimes I can't believe that these pastors would actually do stuff like that. So I just wanted to add that in there based on what you said. Yeah, you know, uh, Darren, it's, you, you get people that go into pastoring for different reasons. You get all kind of characters. Some people actually go into it for a profession. They're good speakers, people are attracted to them, so they use it, and, and let's, let's be honest, some people abuse it. Uh, and unfortunately, those are the ones that are seen the most. So when people hear the word pastor, they, they, they seem like it's kind of funny or a joke. But I want to let everybody know that when you have a true uh, shepherd, uh, that it is difficult. It is challenging. It is burdensome. But yet it is the most rewarding thing you could ever do to watch somebody's eyes open up, to, to reach them and pull them out of darkness into this marvelous light. Uh, but I take it seriously. I don't have time to play with anybody's life. I really believe that if I play with you guys' life, that the blood, your blood, will be on my hands. It is a very dangerous it's thing difficult, to do. Yes, and you don't play. You don't play with people. Um, and and every time I come here, it's all about God. Now, I love to laugh. I have a you know I try to have a great sense of humor. I try to make sure I'm amongst everybody because who am I to be above anybody? I just have a certain role to play, and I tell everybody just play your role. So when it comes into pastoring, man, I, I'm so thankful 
that God didn't place me where I had somebody looking like, man, what's this, what's this guy doing? Or I didn't have to worry about the integrity of it. So I have no excuse. And uh, that's why I tell be careful who, who's in your inner circle. Be careful who you, you take after. Be careful who you model. You want to model somebody, start with Jesus. And after that, put people in your life that's going where you want to go. I wanted to be a pastor that could be respected. But then you also learn when you're respected and do the right thing, the devil hates you even the more. And so you're going to have a lot of enemies. And, and so I've heard early that, you know, you, you're nobody until somebody hates you. So once you get people that can't stand you, want to talk about you, then you know you're making that impact. Hard to believe that somebody can hate this guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, well said. That was good. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ask the next question. So what are some misconceptions that people have about pastors? And that, that goes with what we were saying. Um, the misconception is that pastors have a lot of money. That pastors are, you know, they joke about you have your helicopter, you got your plane. And I'm looking around like, what pastors are y'all talking about? <laughs> you know, I, the only helicopter I have is the little model plane that I bought or the <laughs> helicopter I bought Christian and Ashton that I fly at the house. That was my helicopter. Right. And, uh, you know, pay 30 bucks for it so I could afford that one. Uh, but they think that pastoring is some kind of people want to be superstars. Yeah. They think that the pastor is a superstar because they see, you know why? They see the pastors they're talking about on TV. Yeah. So when you see somebody on TV, you know, TV and the media, they like to propel. They like to put out there what the narrative is that they want you to. They don't want you to take it seriously. They want you to look at them like. Oh, y'all just, you know, and then they get into the Bible says this, and the Bible says that, and then you shouldn't have this much money, and this one playing around, and this one flirting with that one. Uh, but the misconception is, I want you guys to know, the majority of what I call pastors that I know are, are individuals that are, you know, first of all, like me, I've, I've worked on a job since I've been pastoring. You know, uh, I'm coming from a job now. I actually brag on you, man. In all <laughs> honesty, I say, I don't know what y'all talking about. Because my pastor come to church straight from work, man. Right. I really say that to people. Straight from the job. And you know what? I, I don't sit on a job and, and, and do my Bible lessons. I work. I have a, a demanding job. And I take it seriously. And I believe in giving Caesar what belongs to them. So they pay me for it. They don't pay me to read my Bible at work. So when I go there, I try to show integrity so that people, when they say, oh, I should have known you were a pastor, that means a lot to me. When people say, oh, well, I didn't know, but I knew it was something different about you. I don't carry my Bible around work. I don't wear a cross. I don't wear a robe to work. All I wear is the, 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 you know, my, my smile. All I wear is my attitude. And people can tell. So when people talk about pastors, the reality is average churches in America are 50 people under. So when you see these mega churches, y'all have to realize that is the extreme. That is the extraordinary. And again, I'm not against mega churches. More power to them because I know as a pastor just how difficult it is. And I think that's a misconception. People don't realize that pastors have probably the most difficult job of anybody. Think about it. You're getting people to follow a God that they can't see, to listen to rules and regulations that without sounding harsh, but at the same time you're loving, but then guess what? You're dealing with families with issues. Everybody's got problems. The phone calls you get are never like, hey, pastor, good job. They're always like, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. So you're carrying the burdens of everybody. And then they expect you to be perfect. You know, pastor, in 22 years, you know, I've had to be careful that I can't just have a bad I can't get up here on Sunday and just have a bad day. <laughs> I just can't let it out and just let everybody have it. I can't have somebody come. And I know that's been talking about me that know that I know been running me down and, and been splitting up things in the church. I can't go and lash out. I've got to show the love of Christ. And so uh, I've got to remember the story of Moses, uh, not to strike that rock because uh, it can get me in trouble. So I think people need to understand that, that true shepherds, pastors, uh, have a very demanding job. Uh, and, and I always say that you got to be careful uh, because when you are leading God's people, you got to realize that God's at their mind, not yours. So I think that's a misconception that pastors have a bunch of money that we sit back and, and we take all the people's tithing. I heard people say, take all the tithing. And I'm like, yeah, you got bad examples everywhere, guys. But what, the ones that get lost are the ones that really are doing the work, that are working at home, trying to raise families. Uh, it's another thing. Uh, I try to make sure that I was there for my family. So I don't want, you know, Christian and Lindsay and Ashton to have to find somebody else to go to a game or to play or to provide. You know, I wasn't going to give everything to the people of God and not give it to my own family. He said, if you don't take care of your own, you're worse than infidel. 
So I didn't want to be, and I think that people talk about pastors being hypocrites. Pastors are human. Pastors have desires. Pastors have disappointments. People don't realize sometimes how disappointing it is when you pour your heart out and people don't respond. Or you pour your heart out and people talk about you. Or the ones that you give the most talk about you the most. So you got to realize, and pastoring is a difficult job, but when you have those that are standing in the gap for you, that are praying for you, that are seeking God's face for you and crying loud for you, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's just something to be, you know, overjoyed about. Um, and most of us, and I can say for those that I know, we're not in this for money because, there's, you know, I make more money doing what I do with my own degree. You know, and I think people realize that sometimes people look at past like that's all y'all can do. No, I, I beg to differ. You know, I have, you know, degrees. You know, I have secular jobs. I can make much more money if I didn't pastor than with pastoring. So, I, you know, we're here for sacrifice. And so people need to get that concept out of your mind. Are there some bad apples? Absolutely. But you can't throw away everything. You know, you say, you know, you throw out the, the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. You can't do that. And I think in, this, in our society, uh, we need to bring back that respect. But, you know, I, I realize it's a trick of the enemy. They, they don't want people to respect the pastor or the shepherd. Because if you don't respect them, then you feel like you don't have to listen to them. And God obviously said it's through the preaching of the gospel that he's going to save his people. And I could, I could affirm everything he says about, um, about the workplace and everything like that. And the sacrifices that he's made, especially with, like, our family and everything like that. And like Darren was talking about earlier, it's literally times where we're at, he's coming from work. And, like, a couple weeks ago, he's at work, and then I have to pray and stuff like that because he's still a working man, and he's still trying to shepherd this house as well. So it's just a lot of people, they, they stereotype and they place, they look at the top. They look at the top percentage, and that's a very small percentage of what it actually is. And then they label the whole body just off of the top. So like you were saying, that a lot of stuff gets misconstrued and everything like that. So it, 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 it does take sacrifice. And from being in the household with, you know, my pastor and my father, you see the, a lot of the sacrifices and some of the hurt and stuff that, that comes along with pastoring and everything. And uh, it, it kind of leads us to our next question question as far as how you conduct yourself in the workplace how you conduct yourself in the world and what we're basically asking is how how do you what's the difference between being a good person and a Christian because I know a lot of times at work you can be a good employee you can be a good example to others but how can you be a good person like you're a pastor I'm a minister he's a deacon you know you are you know you're a child of God we're all children of God it doesn't matter what title we have right so how do you show that you're not just a good person say oh Christian's a good guy or Monty's a good person or you know Darren's a good person how can we say they're Christian and not just a good person it all uh, goes back to faith you can be a good person and do some good things but if you're going to be a Christian, you got to believe that God is. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's what makes a difference. You know, there's some Christians that aren't, that don't act like good people, and that's a shame. But the reality is, if you are a Christian, then you're going to want to do good works. The Bible says that you want to do good works so that your Father in heaven can be glorified. But a Christian is not about just good work. You're not good in order to be a Christian, if you see what I'm saying. Your good works are as filthy rags without Christ. And so my, uh, a Christian is Christ-like. A Christian must believe in Jesus Christ. That's what makes you a Christian, is your faith in Jesus Christ. That at the end of the day, I'm going to follow what he says. I'm going to attempt to be what he wants me to be. I'm going to believe and trust in him rather than myself. And if you do that, don't worry, good works are going to follow. But you can be a good person and believe in yourself. You can be a good person and not believe in God. And so that means you're, you might be a good person, but you're not a wise person. The Bible says the, it's the fool that says in his heart that there is no God. And so to be a Christian, it's much more than being a good person. But I don't make it clear or make it very clear that you cannot be good enough to earn what God has for you. There's no way. There's no way you can, you can feed every hungry child in the world, but it still can't cleanse your sins. It still can't make you right before God because there's so much in us 
that that you and everybody knows it when you go home when you're in the room by yourself when you got your own thoughts we know what's going on inside but we i'm thankful for christ and my belief in christ so that's why i'm a christian because i believe that jesus christ is lord he's god and it governs everything or it should govern everything that happens in your life your relationships it should govern how you spend your money it should govern how you talk to people how you treat people uh so again it, it's that's what's the difference between a christian and a good person um and and, and to me it people need to recognize the difference uh, Christians are human. They got problems. They got issues. But our belief is that, you know, everything we say and do, we're going to do it. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, sounds like you just give God full authority of your whole life. And you're like, you just let him come in. And <laughs> you were going to say that? No, no. Oh, okay. It just sounds like you give God full authority of your life. And when you said that, well, not exactly, but from what I got from it, I think that when you're at work or you're with family or friends, and let's say you don't feel like ministering or encouraging, a good person might be like, I'm tired. I'm getting out of here. I don't feel like dealing with whatever your issue is. But I think when you're a Christian, you take that time out. The Holy Spirit will help push you to be like, hey, no, listen to what they're saying. Maybe you need to pray for them. Maybe you need to just encourage them or just listen. So, and I, oh my bad, man. <laughs> We're just cutting you off. <laughs> but the thing about it is, being a Christian and a good person, like the things God said in the Bible, it went beyond just being a good person. So if I'm out here, let's say I'm driving, and someone runs a stop sign and hits your car or something like that, or if you're at school or something like that, and then someone like smacks you, you can be a good person and say, okay, I'm gonna be the bigger person. Let's say they smack you again. Then, then, then a, a good person will say, okay, I walked off the first time, but this time I'm going at you. But we have to turn the other cheek. And that's, that's what we should do as Christians. And guess what? A good person, let's say that the other good person, they walked off and they was like, okay, I'm not going to um, act in violence. They go home and just go on about their business. As Christians, we go and pray for that person. You know, and that's that's the little things that we think about. We pray for our enemies. We pray for those that cross us. You know, that's the, that's what I get out of it. And what were you? What did you have? To say? I was gonna say because um, something jumped out that you said that a good person, like they might give you the shirt off their back, but they don't want to hear that God stuff. You know what I mean? They don't want to come to church, but they'll feed you when you're hungry. They'll let you sleep at the house. You know what I mean? Self sufficiency. I got it. I can do it. And and when you get to that point in life, you recognize that I don't need anybody else. I'm good by myself. I, I see these signs all the time that says you don't need God to be good. And so we thumb our noses at God, who is the sustainer and the creator. And so when you're talking about being a Christian, it always gives you something to aspire to. Because when you talk about Christ, you realize the only perfect man that has ever lived, Right. So it, it lets you know, no matter how good you are, that there's something I'm aspiring to that that and, and it helps me to get back up when I fall, that God, I know you're there. You're going to pick me up and I'm, I'm trying to be more like you. And my, my pastor told me years ago, as we try to live sinless, it wasn't, it's not that we're not going to make mistakes, but we're going to sin less tomorrow than we did today, sin less the day after that. We're growing. And so to be a Christian really is an honorable thing to be a child of God. It is a powerful thing, and it's not about just, because somebody can look and say, well, I'm nicer than you are, but the reality is you don't honor and respect God. And at the end of the day, your niceness can't get you into heaven. Your niceness can't give you a relationship with God. It's good to be nice, but it's better to be saved. Ooh, that's a, what, what was this, the yeah. tar call it? Uh, or, she, uh, what she said, Kennedyism. Yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> Kennedyism. Yeah, that's a Kennedy. And I like what you said about that, um, because it's people, even famous people, they give to a whole bunch of charities oh, absolutely. that yeah. help with a whole bunch of stuff. That you go up and talk to them, and you back. They're the most down to earth person, or even right. just people that 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 just live. They'd be like the nicest people. They they'll give to um, all these charities, and they'll um, like you said, give the shirt off their back if they had to. But it's just you can't get them to come to church or to pick up a Bible or to do anything, or even say God, because they'll say, well. I kind of believe it's a greater power or the man the upstairs, universe. you know, the, the universe, universe. That, 
And then to get into the zodiac signs, but we're not going to go touch that because we'll be here for the rest of the week. But um, I, that's what I'm saying. The difference between being a good person and being a Christian is like you, you have to, like he said, you have to have faith and give it all to God and trust in him most and not trust into anything that, that's from this world and become self-sufficient. And another last thing, that Holy Spirit as well, like Imani mentioned, it might be a time where we're like, man, me, I'm going to speak for myself. Like, I might get a phone call. I think you mentioned on Sunday. You're like, oh, man, I don't feel like dealing with this dude right now. <laughs> but when I ignore the call, right, tell me if this happens to y'all, it'll eat me up, man, because I'm like, oh, he might just be asking for prayer. You don't know. So I'm like, dang, I got to call him back, man. <laughs> it's, it's happened to me before where I have a thought to call somebody or text them, and I'm like, I don't talk to them enough. Like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, in my head I say that. But then a few days will go by, that same person will pop up, and I'm like, eh. And then, I'm event like, finally I call them, and they're like, oh, I'm so glad you called me because I was going through. And I'm like, oh, okay, God, this is what you were trying to, you know, nudge me for. So, yeah, the Holy Spirit does that to us. That brings us, oh man, I was super loud coming in. But that brings us to our next point. Um, I believe this is one of your questions. I'll let you go ahead and ask. Oh, okay. Wait, okay. Which one was it again? No, that's you. That's yours. Three. Okay. You, you brushed on it a little bit in the beginning, but I was going to ask, what were the sequence of events that showed you without a doubt that you were called to ministry? Is there something? Uh, it's, you know, I'll be honest with you. It, it really, the one without a doubt. Uh, again, I knew I had a calling. I could feel it. But when I received the Holy Ghost, and this, I know many times people, you know, they want to see a dramatic event. We know that the Bible talks about don't be the one that's seeking after signs, right? But I'll be honest. I said, Lord, if I'm going to do this, if, if this Holy Ghost, because, you know, again, I, I try to be an intellectual. And I try to do everything I could to say, you know what, this, this Holy Ghost is this, this kind of weird here, guys. I mean, I see people jumping and shouting in church. And I'm growing up the whole time. And people are like, you, you an apostolic guy? And, you know, I was kind of like, Man, I don't do all that stuff. And so, I mean, for years and years. And so when I finally got beyond myself and God allowed me to go through, I mean, when I'm telling you God allowed me to go through some issues and struggles and things where I realized that without him, man, I'm panicking. I'm, I'm having anxiety, right? So I'll never forget, I, was, I went to school about 700 plus miles away. And I've told the church some of this story. And I went away because I didn't want to fool it. Like, you know, my mom, y'all know my mom. She's always like, man, you're going to prayer service. You know, you need to be saved. You need to get the Holy Ghost. So I'm like, I'm going to college 700 miles away. So I won't hear that. I'm going to be by myself. I'm going to do my thing. So I went up there and, you know, first couple of years I was doing my thing. Grades were suffering. Didn't realize that without the favor of God that, you know, I wasn't a straight A student no more. Uh, took me a while to realize it. Then I'll never forget, I went to a church. I had, you know, some Christian friends. Thank God for them that would always kind of hang out and say, man, you're not supposed to be doing this. And so I went to a church. They said, come on our church. I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to go. Got together on a Sunday. Lo and behold, when I went up there. Uh, there was an individual that was speaking. Um, uh, it was a young lady. And she came out and she basically said, young man in a gray coat. So, you know, I'm looking around like, who, who got a gray coat on? Who got a great coat on? She said, no, you, you right there. And when I tell you the Lord used her to basically break down the reason why I was running, what the Lord was going to do, and basically, you know, you can't outrun the calling God has for you. It's in you. And I mean, it was in front of, I mean, you know how this God did in front of everybody. So all the folks that was talking, look around like, we told you. And I was like, I, I ain't trying to be, no, I'm, I'm just 20 years old. I'm not trying to do this. And so, but I knew in my heart. And then after that, it was, you know, God kept tugging at me, tugging at me. And this one young lady said something on the bus when I was walking in the back of my bus, uh, you know, on campus. She said, you know what? I wonder if Jesus would have, I had just done something. And she asked me, I wonder if Jesus would have done that. And I, it was a simple statement. And normally I would have brushed her off. But God used that moment to just convict me in my heart. And I didn't know what was going on. And then um, I had a cousin that just, you know, I used to hang with, had just received the Holy Ghost. And when I got a call from my aunt who called me and was just reaching out to me, I'm telling you, I was bawling on the phone. 
I mean, I was bawling the phone, and there was a song that John P. Key had out at the time, and it was called New Life. And when I'm telling you I was riding from Delaware to Baltimore to get to church with tears flooding down my face, I knew that, one, the calling was there, and I also knew I could no longer hide from it and that I had to go now because I was always the type, I'm not going to do dirt in the church. I'm not going to mess around with church girls and have all this bad reputation in the church. You weren't going to have that testimony. You know, I was, if I was going to do something, it's going to be outside of the church. And I'm telling you, I flooded. And so I knew at that moment that the calling was something I couldn't run from and I didn't want to run from it. You know, and at that point, like I said, all the way up to the point where I moved back to Georgia and the Lord finally said, now is the time. And that if you go, I'm going with you. And I'm telling you, he has to be with me because I'm telling you, it seems like every other week you feel like saying, God, this is enough. You know, I don't, I don't want to deal with this. It's, it's, I, can, I can be doing something else, God. You gave me a whole lot of talents. Why, why are you making me go through this? And especially for me as a church that, that you know, uh, a moderate church, you're looking like, God, we could be exploding and doing in this. And God says, you, you know, you got to continue to stop looking at your numerical numbers in your head and just do what I say, impact people. And that's why every now and again, somebody will tell me something that, that blessed them. And I didn't even know they were watching. I didn't even know they were tuning in. I didn't even know that I did something. And, 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 I, and, and I heard that something the other day that really blessed me. He said, we want to draw people to us so we can see them at our church. But God wants to draw them to him. So I want to remind myself to draw people to Christ and let Christ do what he's going to do in their lives. And so all this put together, man, it's, it's the sequence of events. And I went to the library and I said, Lord, if this Holy Ghost is real, I never forget it. I received the Holy Ghost. And he told me, you know, if, you know, go to the library. And I worked at the library. I went and I said, if this is real, I want you to tell me what kind of tongue I spoke in. Tell me. What, what was it? And when I went to the library, somebody said, Eric, there's a book for you. And I said, I didn't order a book. I had an order book. And they said, well, this book is here. And it was a book there with my name on it, sitting there waiting on me. And it was That's a book crazy. dealing with uh, Samoan and, and Asian languages. And the Lord basically said, hey, if you need proof, I, I'm not going to do it all the time. But because I know what I got for you, I'm going to let you know. And I went through that book and the Lord was saying, these are the tongues that I had you speaking in when you received the Holy Ghost. And after that, I, I couldn't deny it. I mean, it was, I had never seen it before. I didn't know, no one knows who put the book there. No one knows who checked it out for me, but it was right there with my name on it. And I said, Lord, what can I say? Uh, and from that point on, you know, even when I have doubts, I know God, you, you are a reality in my life. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That, that basically answered both three and four. And I, I, I want to like, I don't want to like this. He told his story. I don't want to tell too much my story, but I can confirm stuff like the our fourth question was basically talking about did we ex like when when you accepted your calling, did you experience anything like that? Or like we use like Jonah in the well, but like a, an experience where it's like crazy, like it's not going to always be the same. You're not gonna always be. See, you're not gonna always see a burning bush, or you're not gonna always be waking up out your sleep saying, uh, "I'm calling you to mystery." Yeah. But hear that voice. even with me, when I accepted my call to ministry as far as preaching, a lot of the a lot of similarities. It may not have been the same story. It may not have been the same type of scenario that he had. But as far as some stuff that took place in my life, that I'm like God. I have the Holy Ghost because that's the different approach of me. I'm like, I have the Holy Ghost, but is this my calling? And you like, you don't test God, but at the same time, you ask him to make things more clear for you. So after I did these things, I can confirm that it's like, boom, as soon as you walked into it or as soon as you, you as soon as you allow God to speak through you, he opened up this door and it's like, God, that's crazy how you just opened up this, this for me. And it just reassures you that, you know, just keep faith in him and everything. So I can confirm that what he's saying is, you know, true and everything because I've experienced the same type of things. I'm not sure about y'all, too, with anything in y'all's life that has been like a... Yeah, um, actually, I was getting prayer from you. And uh, basically, we're, I don't know if you would call it prophesying, but you were speaking what the Lord said, and you were like, basically, because my issue was, 
I didn't think, I was kind of like Moses, like, I'm not good enough for this. Like, why? I'm still having these thoughts. Because you know how you think, like, I'm supposed to be perfect before I can do any type of ministry. Like, I have to be perfect first. So it's certain, you know, you have those thoughts and certain things, and you like, man, I can't. Like you said, I'm not finna play around. But then you were like, well, God was like, you have to look at yourself the way that I see you. And, I, and that stuck to me because it hit me like right on. Like, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Right. And then everything lined up after that. Uh, the spirit flowed that day. And I think it flowed like longer than I ever had it before. You know what I'm saying? I mentioned this, I think, on another episode like from the altar to the prayer, like even back to my seat, it was still flowing. And I had never like experienced that, to be honest. So that is kind of what I went through. Yeah, I'll say in saying that, as you guys get to it, that God will give you something that will hold you because he knows there's gonna be a whole season and influence and doubt. And, and you see what I'm saying? It's gonna be people that's gonna doubt your experience. It's when people that's going to make you feel like, even those in the church. So God gives you something to hold. Like now, like there's many times when you say something like, God, I really, and let's be honest, if you're real, there's sometimes you, God, I don't understand what's happening. Definitely. I, I don't know what's going on. I, I really, but he gives you something to know that without a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. And I know God has done certain things in me that confirm saying, now, I can't forget. You know, the, the old song says so many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. And that is why I love him so. And so for each of us in your lives, he's going to give you that something. And it's going to come different for everybody because everybody is different. He knows me. He knows me. You know, sometimes, I'm, you know, I'm one of those guys that you have to prove it to. You know, I try to be intellectual. And God is not afraid of intellectuals. I want to let everybody know that you can minister to intellectuals. I'm not afraid of your degree. I'm not afraid of your profession. Because the God I serve is, amen, he's God. He's, he's more profound than anybody. And he used me and he came to me in an intellectual way. And I could not even deny. He said, I'm going to give you something that you can hold on to. And I'm still holding on to it today. And I can't refute it because it was absolutely unmistakably God. So when people come and try to tell me, you know, how do you believe in God? Who is it? God himself will place a witness in your life. The testimony after the test. The message after the mess. And he will, he, he will bless you in such a way that you can't deny it. So I can't deny it. Even though I don't understand everything, I can't deny it. Amen, amen, amen. And with that, y'all have any more, uh, anything else y'all want to cover on this uh, question? Is our last one. Uh, I, I have a, plenty of things, but I'm not going to go into it. Just know God is real. Yes. That's my testimony. Absolutely. He is, he's done so many things in my life that... We'd be here for a long, long, long time. <laughs> exactly. This would be a three-hour episode. I do want to say one more thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if this happened to y'all, but I don't know why God does this to me, man. Like, I don't know. It just seemed like sometimes I won't hear from God, right? Like, I want to, at least. And then, like you said, he'll give me that one thing that's like, I've been hearing you this whole time. And it'll renew me until... You know, you go through that other struggles of life and everything that next season. And then it's like, okay, God, where are you now? Come on. Like, did I do, you know, did something happen? Remember what you told me last time? Yeah. And then he come back and do it again. So. Yeah. But well, God wants you to continue to grow. Just like we do with our children. When they are young and they're babies and infants, you got to pick them up. You got to encourage them. You have to feed them. You have to change them. But after you get to a certain point, they continue to grow. God says, okay, now you're, you're ready to leave milk. I'm going to give you some meat. And the only way he said, you know, the just shall live by faith. So the only way your faith is going to grow, if you're going to live by faith, you at least want to live strong. We said this week, uh, you know, life altering faith. If you're going to live by faith, it's got to grow. The faith you had five years ago won't cut it today. You're dealing with different circumstances, different situations, and the world is getting crazier and crazier. And people are doing what the Bible says. They're getting weaker and wiser. People know more now, have more access to all kind of information, but know God so much less. People now can talk and preach and teach and don't know who God is. You can literally have a great church service and God not even be in the building, so to speak. Because we know how to do it. 
So you got to be careful. God, after a while, makes you grow and strengthen. And so you want him to always be there and say something. God says, trust what I've already told you. I'm there for you. I promise you I'm not going to leave you, but I want you to grow and be stronger. Because when the enemy comes your way, somebody's got to stand. And the only way you're going to build up your muscle is to do what? Go through tension. Go through some struggle. Amen. To go beyond what you think you could and be what? More than conquerors. And so that's why I so sometimes you don't hear from me. Say, I'm still there. But sometimes you got to read. You got to study. You got to work yourself through. You got to pray. You got to want it. That's why the Bible tells us, you know, that if you diligently seek him, God don't want to just keep, give you handouts, but you got to go after him. And if you right. go after him, he'll, you'll find him. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. This is a great episode. I, I believe this was an amazing season finale. Thank, I thank you again to our host for coming out here and getting on the podcast with us. And um, I just wanted to, before we get out of here, I just want to say, like, at the time of recording, today is my spiritual birthday. Oh, Happy birthday. Happy wow. birthday. Uh, April 15th yeah. is my spiritual birthday, and I'm so blessed that I hope that through me being filled with the Holy Ghost, it's been a blessing to others, and I've been able to impact people's lives. So I'm just happy. I'm thankful. I'm rejoicing that God, you know, he spoke through me. And he gifted me with the Holy Ghost in on tax day. Yes. And guess what, man? <laughs> Mine's is tomorrow, man. Oh wow! Oh, happy birthday! Oh, yeah. great men, great men up it's here. Crazy, right? Mine, are yours the seventeen? No. Okay. Yep. So it on when when this when this episode airs, it will be his uh, spiritual birthday. That's right. It'll be on your birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday happy to you birthday. too, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. But. That is the final, this is the final episode of season one. So let's give them a round of applause for tuning in. Good job. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you again for tuning in. And yeah, we'll have our next season out to you within the, um, we're trying to figure out if it's going to be next week, the week after that, but y'all tell us when y'all want it. And we'll try our very best to get it out to y'all. And it's coming, it's coming to the, uh, it's coming up. So we love y'all. Make sure you continue to uh, follow Rockstone Church on all of our social media platforms. It's Rockstone Church on Instagram, Rockstone Church on Facebook, and Rockstone Church on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and you tune into all of our services. This will be this will be streaming exclusively on YouTube, and we just hope that y'all share um, onto Facebook and y'all share it to somebody. Like, click share and send it to two, three, four, or five friends. At least, I'm not, that's not even hard. Uh, family members, friends, just share it to their text right now. I'll give you five seconds. This is, come on, the season finale, come on. Also, comment your favorite episode for the, from this season. Yes, yes. We gave you more than five seconds, so you should be able to. Uh, ten people. Yes, we, ten people. So don't, don't let me keep counting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, make sure you comment your favorite episode. And uh, if, if we see that, that someone on here has invited 10 people and they came because of you, we will be still giving out that T-shirt, that the Impact Podcast T-shirt. So we're going to, uh, we will do it. And uh, yeah, we thank you again for tuning in. And I wanted to say thank you to you. Oh. Because, yeah, man, you've been diligent with appreciate this. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Thank you to Darren for coming. Yeah, I, 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 thank I, you as well. I, I, thank, I thank you. For all that, for all that you've done with this podcast Appreciate as well, and everybody, um, we all Lentia. have to sacrifice to get here. On a, <laughs> you know, together. Yes, and um, all three of us are working people, and you know, it's, it just takes a lot to actually go forward with this. And we thank y'all for the support, because um, this ain't easy, but we know that it's worth it because y'all are worth it, and we want to make sure we're impacting y'all's lives. And we thank, thank pastor. our pastor for allowing us <laughs> yeah. to go forward with this ministry and Absolutely. add it as another weekly scheduled event. Um, we thank you for that, Pastor. Yeah. We thank you for preaching the word on every Sunday, Wednesday, praying for us every Friday. And Very all grateful. that you do, that's not a service. All the work calls, everything that you do, we appreciate you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And um, with that being said, how you can continue to... to uh, show your appreciation for this ministry you can tune in tomorrow and you can watch Wednesday night Bible study he has a great um, teachings for y'all tomorrow we will get further knowledge in the Bible and I promise you you will know something more than you knew yesterday 
And uh, we also have Friday Conversation with God. Drop a prayer request right now. You don't have to wait till Friday. You can drop a prayer request right now. We won't see it right now. Um, we won't be able to talk about it right here on this because it's pre-recorded. But we will get back with your prayer request because we, we always have time to pray. And that's that's ultimately what we're trying to do here. We're trying to impact people's lives. So if you have a prayer request, drop it down here in the comment section or email us at roxlandchurchoutlook.com. We will be more than happy to pray with you in whatever situation that you're going through right now. And, and like I said on Fridays, we that's the time we designate every Friday to pray for y'all. So tune in. That's on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And tune in on in person or online for Sunday morning worship starting at 1030, 1030 a.m. We would love to see you in the building to come worship and get in this, with, this worship experience with us. I'm telling you, it's unique and God's presence is here. And we, we will be here to support you, to greet you, and we'll be here to, you know, to impact your, to impact the future by pointing to the cross and impact your lives. So please come to the building and join us online if you're not, be, if you're not able to make it. And um, we love to have you. We love to, um, to, for you to become a part of this church family. And with that being said, we hope again that you enjoy this season of Impact Podcast, the Impact Season. And anything else y'all want to say before we get out of here? You covered it, man. Covered, I tried to, I tried to. I need to get some water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I well, you like guys I'm... have done a fantastic job, and I'm proud of you guys. You. Uh, and Thank you're you taking guys. the message and go forward. Amen. You have been commissioned to go forward. Great job, wonderful job. We are proud of you. Yep. So it's, it's kind of an emotional moment. Just fine. Just fine. <laughs> um, we're bringing it close to this season, but... We're going to come up with a topic. We're going to come up with um, with something for next season, and we're going to drop it for you. The topic for next season is going to be impactful. So just make sure y'all stay tuned in for that. And, yeah, y'all ready to get out of here? And we're going to stay seated at the table this week because we're showing that we're moving forward. So thank y'all. Share, like, tag, and enjoy life. Impact the future by pointing to the cross. Let's see, we'll see you next time. Take it or you leave it. Been praying for a blessing. Dumb all to try to keep it. The image that you shout out to Driz. Like Official Naraya. You need it. Ask me if it's good or bad. It all depends on what you feel. We tired of being trampled on and tired of being cheated. Step up to the poop and hair braided, khakis creased it. But still, I got the same faith as any other deacons. Pastor, he ain't never lying. Power lies in what you're speaking. I'm good long as I'm living decent. Can't compete with the word I speak because I ain't tweaking. And the Lord keep me going, therefore, no competing. That's till I'm complete. Yeah. Either take it or you leave it. You take it or you leave it. Either take it or you leave it. Take it or you leave it, look. The right ENT. Yeah. The way you talk and use an angry fellow. That's why I keep it solid. Always gotta keep it mellow. Flow like green meadow. Keep it going on and on. And ain't no stopping to the precious father. Call me home. Stay smooth like bone. Can't believe it that I'm in my zone. And you best of best believe it. I ain't never alone. Them proverbs women keep it gutter, man. They keep it gone.